Well, hi there. John here in the shop. We're working on a, a little end table today, and I just wanted to talk through some of the joinery with you on the, basically, the legs to shelf connection. It, uh, when it all goes together, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's through a sequence of, of you know, not very hard table saw cuts you can get there. Uh, this is the inside of our leg, and you can see the foot on the bottom. Uh, there's kind of a, a stair step. And then as you work up the leg, there is a dado for our second shelf, and then the third shelf, which is actually the top, just sits right on top of this leg. So this would be our outside face, or our outside corner. Turn around, this would be our inside. So when you're looking at this, this middle groove is actually cut the same way as our lower groove, but we have a foot added to that. On our shelf, it is a, somewhat of a modified half lap. A true half lap would be halfway through both pieces. For what we're doing here, our long rails basically get a nice deep rabbit on the end and our short rails get two rabbits, uh, one at, uh, I believe it's three eighths and the other at a quarter. And you can see on the very tip of this one, this is my practice piece from when I was setting up. I didn't have this backed up when I ran the data stack through it. I had a little chip out. But when this goes together, so this corner right here, I have to reverse these, would actually go together just like this. It's modified in that you have that second rabbit on the bottom. When you flip this up, you can see we have a recessed portion. This will do two things for me. On our top, this gives me a corner that I can stack right on top of that leg. For our center grooves, this will actually go right into those grooves. And you can see on this, this is my kind of my test cut that slid right in there and it's actually a little bit loose. So again, this corner is the same as this. All we've done is taken it a step further after gluing it together and cutting that notch out. What that notch allows me to do is to slide this whole corner into the leg and there is your corner joint right there. So uh, a few things on this, you can, you can tell obvious, there are a lot of different faces that you're trying to get tight to get a nice tight corner. And um, actually what I do is I cut the grooves first and then I glue the, the extra foot, if you would, on this. So this is a sample piece that has the foot uh, pieces glued on. So basically you have uh, one narrow piece and then one wider piece glued on. You might notice on the bottom of this I glued this on long. So initially when I'm gluing these pieces on they're oversized in width and length. The only thing I'm worried about is this quarter inch height right there. So as I'm gluing these blocks on I'm trying to hit that line as much as I can so I get a nice tight line between the bottom of this rail and then the, the top of that foot if you would. Uh, after gluing them on, I, I uh, actually glue them on as square stock, then I took them over to the bandsaw, basically marked a line from corner to corner and bandsawed uh, the taper into both faces. Uh, Afterwards, you have a little bit of cleanup. You could plane this off, you could sand it off as well. And then the very last thing I'm worried about is actually trimming up this material that's proud of the bottom of the foot. So uh, again, as I'm doing this, I want this to look pretty, but what I'm really focusing on is actually making these joints as tight as possible. Now, let me flip this around as well. This corner is my best corner right now that I have fitted ready to go. If I turn this around, you can see that this corner's uh, my worst as far as it isn't going together quite uh, yet. And this one is sticking out a little bit as well. I try to make these as 
tight of joints as possible when I was cutting these dados on the legs. So uh, what's going on here is I have a little bit of uh, misalignment when I'm gluing these parts on. Typically when I was gluing this together, I had the panel, I glued the, the two ends on first, and then I slid uh, the sides in. Now, my last side, just because of how it aligned, this must have been just a little bit off, so it was up just a little bit. So when this goes on, that half lap basically indexes and you're gonna get what you're gonna get. So this is sticking up just a little bit. So all that's holding this up right now is I have to go through and do a final sanding and make sure I, I concentrate my efforts a little bit more right on this corner, and then this whole uh, leg assembly will slide right in. This one over here uh, is a little bit tight as well, not quite as bad. Uh, you know, you could probably <laughs> force it into that, but I, I don't want to, you know, beat it with a hammer to get it in. So this is probably the, the most complicated looking part of this, but it, it actually is achievable through you know, pretty simple steps just to get there. Again, the, uh, the top groove is gonna act just the same as this bottom groove. You just have the addition of the, the foot down there. So this lower shelf and this middle shelf will actually be relieved on those corners. Those will be cut out. And then the top one sits uh, right on top. Uh, I wanna also uh, break here and go over to the table saw and show you cutting that uh, corner joint cleanly. Um, uh, I chose just to do it, instead of doing a stacked dado head on it, I, I chose to do it with just a, a, a regular combination blade and do it in two cuts, but you have to stand the workpiece up on end. Um, not the biggest workpiece in the world, but still it's, it's a little bit awkward. So let's set up and go over there and, and try to cut some joints. All right, and here we are at the table saw. Um, my setup to cut these panels is to utilize a tall fence uh, to help guide the end of the workpiece, and uh, uh, actually a shorter fence on the miter gauge. Part of the reason I'm, I'm not using the, the tallest fence possible on the miter gauge is a lot of times you can overstress these gauges. So this is uh, an Incra V120. It's actually their older model. Um, the new one actually has a, a bridge here to kind of reinforce this. Um, but this one, if you actually put too much stress on the top of it, you can actually bend this. So uh, once in a while, when changing out uh, my sacrificial um, backer board here, I, I check to make sure this is actually still square. But for a lot of miter gauges, they aren't very tall. So if you really get a tall, um, kind of sacrificial backer on this uh, and, and really start torquing on it, you can get yourselves into, uh, um, you know, a bit of a, a bind, if you would. So you can see this one, this uh, has seen quite a bit of use. It's uh, covered in screw holes from, uh, basically I use all four corners before I throw it away. Uh, so these are uh, mounting holes from when I had it flipped to the other side. Uh, over in the corner. Uh, actually, this is from when we were cutting those um, dados in the legs. And right now, I have this set up. So I have this, this tall auxiliary fence, and I have this almost kissing that. I don't want it so tight that it's gonna bind, but I want a little corner here because on our second cut, we're actually gonna cut through the corner of the, the panel glue up that we have for that shelf. And if I don't have something backing that up, I'm gonna have a little piece of wood in here dancing around that's probably gonna to wanna to eject out the back, maybe up, hopefully not towards me. So I have this little corner back here to actually push it through. So on this, I have set up a zero clearance insert. So nothing's gonna get trapped between the blade and the, and the groove because it's the width of the blade. And I'm, I'm trying to uh, get this as tight as possible to the fence so nothing can slip by there. I do have a riving knife behind it, so the goal is when you get this, uh, when you're cutting this, to get past the, the blade and into this riving knife before you stop. So anything that you've cut off is well past the cut. Uh, my tall fence over here, I think I made this originally to do 
uh, some raised panels. So I just want to show you what's going on with that. Over here, I've um, made a box and uh, it has a couple grooves in it so you can run your clamps down and actually clamp it to your table saw fence. And I, I at the time I did this thinking, okay, I'm gonna make this part removable. So uh, this over here is nine inches. So I thought, okay, a nice tall auxiliary fence at nine inches and then I'll have this removable for big stuff. But what I found is I've just never taken this off. So this one over here, we're running 18 and the, the depth of it is about the, the depth of my table saw. So that's what I would suggest is um, make it about the length of your saw, the length of your fence. So that's how I'm actually mounting this to the saw. It's, you know, nice and solid. Uh, another thing I, I double checked before I um, started cutting on this was that this was actually perpendicular to the table. If your, your mounting method to your fence makes that lean a little bit, when you get a tall panel in there, you can get into trouble. So this again is, is a sample panel. And what we need to do to get this uh, to fit into our legs is we need to notch these corners out. So um, I think on the, the master plans, they're gonna be dimensioned at seven eighths by seven eighths, that corner notch. But what I did was I measured the actual uh, width of what's left on the leg after cutting that dado or groove in it. And I ended up just a little bit under seven eighths. So with a little bit of trial and error, uh, what you're setting up here is about seven eighths on height of the blade and you're about seven eighths from the face of whatever fence you're using to the left side of your blade. So just double check that. Yeah, so we're a little under seven eighths here and we're gonna be a little bit under seven eighths there. So what I actually did when I started this was I uh, ran this closer to the blade and I ran the blade down. So to get to my full depth, I was slowly raising the blade to get to the correct depth and I was slowly moving this fence away from the blade to get the, the perfect notch. So the kind of the beauty with this is if you undercut it, you can test fit it into the leg and if it doesn't quite go all the way in, then you can increase uh, this or increase this and get to uh, finished depth. So uh, part of what's going on here is uh, just being able to hold this because we're going to run the, the workpiece through like this. And then if we're cutting this corner, we're gonna have to stand it up like this to finish the cut. So you'd think the taller dimension here is actually the harder thing to do. Uh, but I actually, uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's taller vertically, so you'd think there's a more, uh, greater likelihood that you're going to end up, uh, you know, pitching back and forth on it. But actually I found that, we'll turn this back around here, this, this one was harder for me. Initially what I was trying to do was to come around here and hold it like this. So I'm standing behind the saw in the usual manner. I, if I need to kick it off, I can touch my knee to the, the on-off switch. But what I found was I'm up on my tippy toes trying to push this through and by about right when I'm starting to cut the blade, I'm actually starting to lose balance. So what I ended up doing is I'm gonna stand here to the side. So back of the saw back here, stand to the side, use a push pad. Again, I don't wanna be up here because I'm just gonna tip off. So I could be down here and holding it, but what I just did on, on this bottom surface is put it right on the ledge, hold it right on the workpiece, and then actually, if I'm worried about this coming off my tall fence, I'm just leaning into it with my shoulder. So it's a little different cut, but what we're gonna do is go just like this, and again, uh, take it nice and slow, get it past the blade, and um, remember that we actually have to get it past the riving knife too before we start trying to pull things off. So let's take a first cut and uh, see how that goes.
so here's our first cut through and you can kind of see on this corner this is our half lap so on a finished panel this side would be up we have this little recess on the bottom and again on the top panel we're not going to do this at all this sits right on top of the leg but here this is what locks into our leg this is about three quarters of an inch wide so we've made that initial cut like this now we have to stand the panel up and finish the cut Now, when I'm cutting on this side, before I had my push pad about right here, now if I have it up, I have a little bit of void in the back. So I'm gonna hold this actually just a little bit lower, make sure everything is nice and tight and vertical, then we'll turn this off. All right, pull the miter gauge back, and that is the corner notched out to go into the leg now. And you can see because I had this little tail on my auxiliary fence, the little square of material that we trimmed off ends up well back of the blade, so you don't have to worry about ejection there. Um, actually, some of the, <laughs> the more you use a table saw, uh, the more you realize it isn't always getting your finger in the blade, it's stuff get, that gets thrown out when you're least expecting it that'll actually hurt you. So there's that corner. This is an upside down view, and that's what's going on. Uh, and you can see what's kind of fun about this joint is once it goes together, you're going to have these little squares of end grain sticking out right next to the leg and of course people are gonna sit and look at it and go how in the world did you do that um, another way to to do this if you didn't want to go through all the the trouble of cutting this kind of modified half lap where you have three different depths of rabbits to cut you could actually miter these corners and uh, end up uh, cutting that groove a little bit taller in your leg to make that fit but it, it, this can, you can, you can do a wide variety of things. I was actually thinking about uh, doing this with just a butt joint as well. Uh, the joinery wouldn't show through, but it's certainly possible to do. So that's how that goes together. We'll move on from there.